Welcome back in Spotlight. I'm here with the city manager, Jan Brathwaite. Welcome, my sister. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Good to see you. You know, you're welcome anytime. I, it's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. You know, you know what I want to establish right away? The yeah. boundaries of the city. I, I try to remember the boundaries of the city. Every time you come on the show, you just tell me the boundaries of the city. Yes. And, and I have no problem in telling you them again tonight. Yes, tell me the boundaries of the city. The boundaries of the city range from the bottom of Jean Hill in the east. Right. To Slaney in the west. Okay. G Gene Hill to Slaney. And I got then that. We have some of the surrounding areas, that, which include parts of Boggers Bay, Purcell, Lower Estate Botanic Station, um, a little bit of Joe's Hill, the bottom part of Joe's Hill, okay. and along Paul Watley Drive, and all the way down through McNamara. Okay. And then a little bit by Fort Broad, that whole area. That's basically. Boundaries of the so a little, a little, a little below um, Joe's it would be like in Longbush. Right. Up, that's in, part in, of the city. Yeah, that's, ah, that's, that's part, part of the city. city. Okay. No, no, no. I, that's I think a good I part remember. of the city. I, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. I think I could remember. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot is happening. Yes. A lot is happening. A lot is happening. You, uh, you got a new cruise, a new expansion, a, 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 a pair on. expansion going mm -hmm. on. Uh, how is that? How is that? How is that beginning to impact the city and and, and what your what your expectations are in that construction phase? Actually, um, the impact is so far so good. Um, we, we do have the 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 normal talks about the tone uh, as to what's happening and how it's happening. Um, we would like to let the public know that as soon as we have a proper timeline, they'll be welcome to see and understand what's going on out there. Mm -hmm. We don't have that quite yet, um, but we have begun and um, things are looking good. I'm excited about what we're going to do with the reclamation and how that's going to affect and impact what happens within the confines of mm -hmm. the city. Now, so you're reclaiming what outside of the admin comp behind the admin complex? Yes. So how far are you going? Not very far, you know. Um, it's, not, it's not a real big Big, um, and what's, 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 what's the reclamation going to be for? What, what you well, put there? the thing about it is I can't speak to what the reclamation is going to be for because I think we need to kind of ensure that the government and all of us are on the same page before I could discuss that. But as soon as I know that, trust me, I'll be back to you tell like you about that. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. You got to make sure you, you don't say where you are, then fine. They no, got I, plan, I, right? I, have to, I have to make sure that I, I say what the plan is. What the plan is. Yes. <laughs> I, hear, I hear that. So... So that's, that's 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 coming on stream. Mm -hmm. uh, what 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 else is happening? You you, you uh, oh we have a lot happening. Um, you just had your festival. You just, you just, just had, had our festival. festival. Just had um, our festival. I know a lot of people were concerned over the fact that I said on another program that I had turned over the city to the festival and fairs committee. I think it's a great idea to share the city with other people so they could feel a little bit of what I feel on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. um, they, we turned it over for exactly one month. They've uh, almost turned it back over. It happened quite turned it back and over. When you say turned it over, what that means? It means that whatever happens activity-wise within the confines of the city, the Festival and Fairs Committee actually spearheads it. Not that we don't do what we're supposed to do in the city, but they spearhead it. We give them the opportunity to decorate it, to make it pretty, to make sure the activities happen, to make sure that, you know, the, f the extra funds that can be collected to ensure that the city remains clean during the activities, they also have that opportunity to collect. And they work well with the vendors that we have. And they say it did look good. It did look good, you know, I, I'm, I must say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take the backpack credit, credit for it because it's still my city, but I mean, I gave them the opportunity and it was opportunity I was consulted. They didn't do anything without us knowing what they were doing mm -hmm. and how we felt about it and if this was right and if that was right, you know, they didn't want to mash on any con. So it, the relationship worked very well. This year, I must say, and I must congratulate the majority of the vendors that came out. Everybody had the licenses that they needed to have. The inspection went without flaw and I know we had a lot of tents on the side of the road, but you know, that that, the that food, comes the food with pride. handlers were all licensed. They were all licensed, you know. Everything down was the road. sanitary. Yes, I went down the road and I physically checked myself, make sure, you know, we ticked them off. It was good. I mean, everybody complied. I would like to say that, you know, that is the way we need to co continue to cooperate when we have activities of this kind. And, and I think the, 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 the way the roundabout was uh, decorated was a nice touch with all yes, the queens. It was. The, the cake. The, yeah, the cake, the cake. The cake with the cans nice. on it. Yes. Yeah, that was that was hard, yes. hard, hard idea. Yeah. And of course, the the, the new um, banners yes. and all that yeah. stuff. And, and, and we hope we hope that 
you know, the banners continue, not, mm -hmm. not just for festival, but we try to ensure that we have banners throughout the city, you know, highlighting other events and other activities within the confines of the city. Cool. So what is, what's coming up? What, what, what can we expect now uh, to happen in the city? Um, we're, getting to do a we're getting ready to do a couple of things. Um, first and foremost is we have um, recommission decommissioned the Her Majesty's Prison on Main Street. So now we've had, we have the opportunity, we've given the legal green light to go ahead and change that into a museum. Mm. So work should begin on that early in September. So we're going to be kicking off that. What do you expect to see in there? Actually, it's going to be a prison museum using um, prison artifacts, all the uses that that particular entity has had over the many years. We're going to highlight those things and create um, the opportunity for people to actually visit um, mm -hmm. and see some of the historical background. We, and going into the building, I was in there today, um, going into the building, there's still some replicas and inf information from the last set of people that stayed there. So we're trying to make sure that we could preserve that so people could actually see, you know, like their rosters and how they operated. Mm -hmm. So it's not an all derelict. It, it, it's not, uh, it's in a position right now where we can restore it and, and bring it back to life. And I, I really am interested to see how it's going to impact Main Street. Um, and reason being because even though it's a closed facility at the moment, we get a number of calls of people just wanting to see what it mm -hmm. looks like as it is. They have no problem with what is actually going on in there. They just want an opportunity to see. So if they want an opportunity to see as it is in its present condition, could you imagine when we fix it up and really create an atmosphere that people want to go in there? Is the story of what our national heroes and are going to be told in, 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 in that museum? It's going to be told in there, yes. And that's yes. that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's an important aspect, I think. That's, yeah. that's great. Good to hear that. What is happening? Actually, we also have the old post office building that mm. has been decommissioned also and we're actually in the process of trying to study with some archaeologists um, what would be the best use of it in that part of the city and and how you know we could ensure that we get some traffic because I know foot traffic especially mm. in that part of the city um, and as we look at that we actually had to make a decision as to how we're going to make the facilitation for foot traffic along Main Street. How are we mm. going to improve that? And that is something that's going to happen. So the post office is not coming back to town? I cannot say that the post office will not be back to town. We're mm -hmm. actually looking at the studies as to see what we would actually put in. Because the, the post office is a big draw for the it Merchant is. Main it Street. It is. It is an awesome draw yeah, for at, the, for um, the Main Street. Street. Yeah. And I, as we talk about the old post office, we can't do the old post office in isolation. So we're actually getting ready to put out a competition to redesign Sir Alva George's Plaza. What do you see? Yes, we want, we want to see what, you know, architects, landscape engineers, and so forth come up with as we look at re redesigning Sir Alva George's for, Plaza. For what, for what vision, for what goal? The, 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 um, the vision is to ensure that that area becomes the area that has the wow factor and the welcome into the city of Rotan. So, so it's right there by the ferry dock. We're in trying to encompass mm -hmm. the whole ferry dock situation, the whole um, boardwalk promenade situation as it comes into there. So that at the end of the day, well, when you, when you decide to come and wait for your ferry, because now I'm understanding that you have to be there at least an hour before, mm -hmm. that that is something that would say, okay, I have to be to the ferry for an hour, but if I come down, I can relax in a green space. That's so our jobs is going to take a look at what's happening in the old post office building and really capture what ha is happening in that part of Roto. I am excited because yeah, I, I, mean, I, 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 I can see like the grand entrance to the city of Roto. Mm. So, yes, we With are. Some music, some, yeah, you some know, uh, the whole, uh, the whole uh, nine little yards. Cafe. Yeah, you know, I yeah. mean, mm -hmm. I know um, on one of my previous programs I talked about you know extending the nightlife in the city and I, I got bombarded but I want people to understand that nightlife extension in the city does not necessarily mean loud music it, it, it creates an opportunity where people can work until 430 go home take a shower pick the kids up come back sit in a green space enjoy a lemonade enjoy some coconut tart have some coconut water but it, it means that the city will just be uh, open for a little longer and that people can enjoy the city, creating, you know, shopping opportunities and that kind of thing. So, um, and as I talk about that, I'll talk about the fact that we're actually looking at how we're going to 
ensure the alleyways within the confines of the city take you from Wickhamski to Rotown, Main Street, and vice versa, mm -hmm. and that things like air condition units, how we're going to create the facade. Some of them on the ground, they probably need to come up so that we could have that flexibility to walk through the alleys and, and try to create a safer opportunity for people to have a healthy walking experience within the confines of the uh, city. Uh, a regular conduit back and forth, yeah, uh, you waterfront know, drive, Main Street back and forth. Right, you uh, know, we, we need to create that opportunity. It's there, we just happen not so to lose so it. So you want Main Street to open up, a little, to be opened up, you want, you want a more vibrant Main we Street. We want a vibrant, more vibrant Main Street, but we mm -hmm. want a more vibrant city. We want the mm -hmm. city to come to life, but we need to make sure that the connectors, especially within the alleyways, are there. Yeah. They, 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 uh, well, uh, there's two things I want to get to. You're talking about the nightlife. And and the noise, uh, are we are we going to are we because there's been a lot of complaints about uh, yes, you know, just me <laughs> the, the, the the noise on on main on main street, uh, but we we got we gotta have music. We have to have music. How, and we how, have how are we gonna manage we manage to that have balance music. between disturbance and enjoyment? We have to have music, and we we are actually you know. During the, which is one of the good things, when the festival and fairs has the city for the, the, the I get opportunity to look at other things, at least from behind the scenes. And mm -hmm. this, this festival, I had the opportunity to, to get a lot of calls, a lot of complaints about the noise. And a lot of people were, yeah, it is festival, so, you know, we can give it a break. But we have to understand that there is a resident community that lives within the confines of the city, and we have to respect that, especially some of the older the older um, people that live within the confines of the city. So the balancing act um, is going to be a little bit difficult and a little challenging, but one of the things that I do know is all the entities that are concerned with it, we're all on the same page. So, I mean, it's an it's a education process. It's, it's, it's not necessary for the whole world, to, uh, well, for the whole, <laughs> whole for the whole, for everybody in the city, everybody mm -hmm. passing outside, right. to hear the music, music going on within in your establishment. Right. So th those are things that, that we said in any case. Right. Uh, we actually, um, later this week, we're going to um, have a meeting with the Royal Virgin Islands Police Force because they're, they're, that's one entity, but there are a couple of other entities within the confines of the city that we need to get regulated and, and sorted out so that the city is pleasant for all the participants who come to the city for whatever the reasons mm -hmm. are. Um, yes, we know that um, bars and clubs have their concerns, but I think at the end of the day, when we, when we wear and measure, we need to make sure that whatever we do is to benefit the country as the country tries to move forward and move to another level. So. Okay. So now, the Main Street has had a, a plan for many, many years, had several yeah. plans, actually, right. and we haven't seemed to be able to get any of those plans off the ground, uh, you know, discussions about whether it could, should be made a promenade, whether we should close down the street, uh, you know, for how long, for part of the day, all together, you know, put, in a, put a brick face on the, on, the, on the asphalt, a whole bunch of stuff. Nice yeah. new lighting, maintain architectural integrity. All, all those good things. All those, all good, those things. good things. What, 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 what are we looking at? Um, and, and some of the stuff you alluded to is some of the things that will happen. Um, from a pedestrian, we need to ensure that it becomes more pedestrian friendly. Whether we're going to stop our traffic, I don't think that is going to be humanly possible. I don't think we have a big enough road network to accommodate closed off yes. Main Street. Mm -hmm. That's one. There's businesses on Main Street that need that traffic. Even if that traffic is driving through, there's an opportunity for somebody who's driving to cast their eye and see something that says, maybe I need to park someplace else and come back to Main Street to get it. So we don't want to make sure, we want to make sure that that opportunity still is still viable. Um, actually, whether we cobblestone the street, yes or no, I don't think that's a two-day thing. I think that we're probably going to start with probably looking at how we can do pavers for the sidewalk. So we're going to mm -hmm. begin with something. Mm -hmm. uh, when we get to cobblestone, maybe a couple of years from now, maybe we look at that. But mm -hmm. for right now, we just want to make sure that when a Juenka is walking to the coffee shop routes, that nobody runs on his foot, and yeah. he's comfortable walking on the sidewalk. I don't have to keep looking back. And you don't have to look back. back. Yeah. And you, you know, it's it takes, comfortable. It takes away from your walking yes, experience. Right? Yes, right? Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure that that, 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 that experience that within here. the confines of the city mm -hmm. is a positive experience. Now, we know that we have some places on Main Street that are a little narrower than other places. And so we're doing things to try to accommodate that narrowness. So there will be situations where we may not have sidewalks on both sides, but mm -hmm. we would have sidewalks at least on one side. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, we can't 
push buildings back right now. Yes, for sure. Um, so, but we want to make sure that it's a comfortable walk along Main Street. What about the QE2 Park? We got a big space there, nice, nice fence, nice lion uh, from, fence. From what, what, what are we doing? From where I sit, I know that we have the plants. The plants are awesome. Um, I actually saw some work actually happened in there today. I'm not 100% sure as to what was going on today, but I know that it's, um, it's, a, it's a plan that the government wants to make sure it happens. One of the, the reasons is because it, it will create a part of the healthy environment that we, we need to have within the confined the city. It's also going to be an awesome green space, a space for family and friends, and a place for us to kind of relax a little bit. Um, we, we need to create more spaces like that within the confines of the city. I actually, before I came here, I was in a meeting, and one of the um, things that came up was the whole issue of restrooms within the confines of the city. And during the festival, we had a little bulletin that went out to let people know that the Noel Oil Park restrooms were still open and those at Crafts Alive. But I think um, we need to do some more sporadically throughout the city, especially as we look at the increase of numbers, especially on, as, as cruise ship passengers are coming in, that they're going to need some place to relieve themselves. So we're going to have to actually look at that. Okay. And, and while you're talking about restrooms, I want to commend, take this opportunity to commend the Festival and Affairs Committee for the management of the restrooms in the village. And yes, they, they, they were awesome. They were awesome. They were awesome. Really, I, I, had, I, 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 really had occasion, I had occasion to use them a couple of times. They were constantly being clean. Yep. The smell was good. The, I mean, they were working them restrooms. Yes, they did. Yeah, they, they did. did. And, I um, and, and as you say restrooms, I also would like to uh, commend the people that did the restrooms during the basketball. Um, CBC games. Right. They were awesome too. Yes, I mean, yes, I heard yes, people say yes. I would never ever go to this bathroom, but I couldn't stay out of them this time. So, yes, you know, if, yes. we, if we continue on that road, yes. you know, I mean, and the people that clean the bathrooms, they need to be commended because cleaning a bathroom is not the Easiest sweet, thing, the sweetest job. thing in the world. Yeah, the but those job. people, yeah. I, I found that they took awesome pleasure in doing it yes. for the customers I, that they I, were I, serving. I did you know, use, I I did they, use they those bathrooms to, a yes. few times during the CBC yeah. games as they well. They were up to snuff. They did a great job. Yeah. So that's that's a good sign. That's mm -hmm. a good, moving I mean, forward. I mean, really, truly, I'm getting the sense that we are moving from from the taxi service and the discussion that we're having tonight. I'm, I'm getting the sense that the BVI is moving to a real professional level. We we we, we are. You we're know. trying. It's it's and I'm it, telling you, it's an exciting you, time. Really, yes. But it's and it's not easy, and mm -hmm. and, and not everybody's going to agree. But at the end of the day, I think that we will get the kind of respect that we need. Mm -hmm. as a people trying to move forward because we have to move the BVI to the next level if you're going to be accommodating all these visitors we have to do something yeah. and if the something means that I'm going to stand up on a limb by myself and work it that's what we're going to do gonna but happen. it's going to happen yeah, it's going to happen break yeah. for words from our sponsors uh, when we come back we're going to talk about some challenges we got uh, uh, some traffic challenges some parking challenges we would like to see some more trees and sidewalks so we could walk to yes. greater distances in the shade because the sun yeah. is hot these days, trust mm -hmm. me. You know, so we're going to talk about some of the things we come back. Right after these are some spots. Keep it locked right here to Spotlight. We'll be right back. Spotlight is brought to you by the National Bank of the Virgin Islands and CCT Global Communications. Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm Edge and I'm having a really good time here with my good sister Jan Bradford, the city manager. We're talking about a lot of good things happening for the city, a uh, lot of good things coming up, um, big, big plans. Of course, we have some challenges to overcome. We, uh, we, 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 we go, we're going forward. Yes. I, I, I'm excited about the whole thing. I too. Yeah. Uh, traffic. Yeah, traffic is, like we used to say in New York, traffic is a zoo. <laughs> Traffic is a zoo sometimes, yep, on and, certain days. And, and trying to find a, a, a parking space. You know, parking used to be a dollar an hour, and and, 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 and and I'm excited about paying for parking only because it's it's it it, it reflected a real entrepreneurial spirit of the right. people mm -hmm. to, to recognize a need and to step in. And fill that, that demand, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. But a lot of us, see, I mean, they went, from, they, they, they raised the price a hundred percent instantly <laughs> to two dollars. Yeah, from one dollar hour to two dollars yeah. hour. Yeah. You know, that was that, that hit me a little head. But still, you know, it's still convenient. Yes. And the price is not out of reach as yet. But it, it, you know, but 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 parking is is, is a challenge. What what were we doing? And, and parking has become an even bigger challenge with us. 
um, fencing the area over by the cruise ship. Yes, yes. Um, with us ensuring that the walkway between Miss Patsy Lake's place and Vanderpool remains a walkway because people seem to think that it's a highway. So it's a pedestrian mall. Mm. Um, and during the last couple of weeks, we have lost a lot of parking spaces. And, and I truly, I understand. I actually um, sat down with um, some guys the other day and we actually decided how, when Festival Village site is not in use, how we could use it for parking. Um, and we have, we have done some designs, some designs that we just need to put the minister to kind of approve that we could ensure that people park in an orderly fashion within yes. the festival site. It, and it can hold a, a number of vehicles. Um, it's, a good, done, it's a big site. Yeah, we've done mm -hmm. some drawings with the, the entire site for parking. Mm -hmm. And we've also done some drawings with us preparing for festival, keeping the festival site intact but parking around the festival site. And we've been able to come up with some awesome plans, which um, we're going to present to the minister to see if, you know, if it's something that we could, so we could direct people to that. Because losing that space on the key has been really, really mm -hmm. impactful on the city. I mean, I have seen people up to today driving around four or five times just waiting to see who's going to snoop out of this space so I could get in the space, so I could do what I want. And then when I get in that space, I'm not moving until this afternoon. But... Um, it is something that we, we are concerned about. I know that from the Ministry of Communication and Work, there has been talk about parking garages, um, and I can say that. Um, one that probably may be located within Burham Electric and Scotia Bank, and another one down at the hospital site, um, mm -hmm. high-rise parking. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that there are some drawings that uh, we're looking at. Um, for those two locations. Hopefully, when, if and when those come on, on stream, we should have, um, you know, some, some ease on the parking as it relates within the confines of the city. In my, from my personal opinion, I have a philosophy where I hope that we can get to a stage where we do park and ride so that we could find a location to the east of the city and to the west of the city that, you know, you could park your vehicle safely and then you can ride into the city, do your business, and take the vehicle back, out, take the bus back out. But you know, because I have a city bus now. Have you seen it? I ha no, I haven't seen your city ah, bus. You yeah, got a city, city bus. bus you got now. city bus, and you got bus stops. We well, we actually getting ready to put the bus stops in. Mm -hmm. We know we have kind of locations actually. Oh yes, I saw the city tomorrow, bus this Tomorrow I'm yes, supposed saw, to go on a city, city bus. City bus and yes, I the city bus one. one dollar. Can you imagine? Uh, yeah, a dollar, a dollar bus in the city. A dollar bus in the city. Right away. It actually starts in Humptons Gut and it goes as far up as CS. Why? And then it goes all the way down to Slaney and it comes back up. But you know what's interesting? The city bus passes through Longbush and Lower State. What do you see? Yes. So you could just you could you go just, you could just you could, could, could tour the, the whole, city, the city on the but, city bus for one dollar. You know what I mean? I mean that's awesome. That's awesome. I yeah. think that's a good entrepreneurial awesome. skill. So yeah. I'm supposed to go on the city bus this week and actually map so we know where exactly the bus stops need to be. We get we're getting a couple of bus stops from the Rotary Club and I'd like to commend them for you know, the foresight um, yeah. to, to get the bus yeah. stops. And we're going to take the bus yeah. around and then you're going to actually see the bus schedule and the bus stops, you know. We're going to we're gonna you're step gonna it up that. a notch. You're we're going to step up. it up a notch. Gonna That's you know? awesome. Yeah, we're yeah. going to step it up yeah. a notch. I, I, I'm really excited I about that. I think you a chance to talk to Damien about a, a, a national transportation <laughs> system because, I, you know, I, I pick up people all the time, you know, especially going uh, the Bellevue way, mm -hmm. uh, women and children, people shopping, and actually with groceries, of, uh, you know, all, 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 all hours area. of the night, all hours of the night, you know, we yeah. need a transportation system to take right. our people back and forth to work on a different shifts, you know, and, and it's getting to be, re it's going to be a real challenge now for, yes. for people to get around right. in the time that they need to get, to get around. around. Yeah. So we really got to mm -hmm. look at that, that transportation system yeah. seriously. Well, now. the city, we have, we have the city bus and I, um, I, I have to con uh, congratulate the entrepreneur and, you know, when I called them to tell him that, you know, we were willing to assist him with, with the scheduling and, and we're going to put in the bus stop, he was excited. He said, you just, just need to get on the bus and you just need to figure out the times and the stop and then we'll be good to go. Get and, to and that's something that we're going to do. And, and from the Ministry of Communication and Works and the Office of the City Manager, that is something that we're going to promote because we feel that the more people that ride something like the city bus will eliminate us from having to bring all the vehicles to town and, and move through the city. Because you could, you could be in a city and get on a city bus and get to the bank. Yeah. Well, I, I will, I, and, and that's great. And, and I mean, I love that. But I also like to see more of us walking. 
Of course. You know, uh, uh, I'm, I'm for that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and of course, with the, the ministry's national strategic plan for the prevention of non-communicable right. diseases, diseases, we need to get some exercise. Right. And, and yeah. I get a lot of flack because I walk a lot, but that's how you see what's going on also, though. Well, I, I, I usually pack my truck by CCT, mm -hmm. I pack a lot, and I would walk everywhere I have to go at west. You know, mm -hmm. even as far down as, as a hospital. Right. You and know, it's good. And, 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 and it's not really that far, you know. No, it's not. And if I have to, and if I have to go to, say, like, the Boris Garage to, to get service my truck, I would walk from Boris Garage straight down to town to right. and do whatever I have to do. And when it's ready, I walk right back up to Boris Garage. I mean, the walking is nice. It's good. But not only that, not only that the walking is nice, the walking also helps us to create a social atmosphere that we don't normally have because i mean it means my, along my, the way. my staff tell me playing all right i ain't gonna be walking to tell me you man you gotta stop to say hello to everybody but that's when you learn what's going on that's the people people that see things that you don't see and give you some insight into what it is you're doing as a city manager i need to hear from people what's going on because i can't see everything yeah. and so when i walk through the city I get an opportunity Abs to meet absolutely. people who I don't even know, people who I didn't even know you knew I was the city that's manager. How I know what, that's how yeah. I know what's going on. Yes, that's how you yeah. know what's that's going what on. You know I'll, I'll never on. forget August, Monday night when we were doing the cleanup with the Department of Waste Management. Um, I had people who I don't know, that, that lady there, that's a city manager. You know, because I was coming up the road mm -hmm. with the guys with the garbage and what have you, making sure that nobody got run over and what mm -hmm. have you. They said, that's the city manager. The city manager's out at 8 o'clock at night, you know, watching the guys pick up garbage. But at the end of the day, I make sure the city is still in order because we got to walk the next day, we got to operate the next day, and so forth. Absolutely. But I love the whole issue of walk, and I think that's probably why I'm not putting on any pounds, too. <laughs> well, and, and, and I'm encouraging you to lose some pounds. <laughs> but, you know, we gotta get some trees. Yes, that's the, the, and, and, gotta, and especially going up the the, the, the the carriageway. Yes, you know, going up the carriageway, and I don't know how we can get that done. That the sidewalk is already in, but it seems to me that we need some trees up along the carriageway. We need trees all about. We need trees. It's great. And it's great that the trees. You know, we, we, those trees are planted. The trees on on Waterfront Drive and the trees. I think that's the Castro Avenue. Right. Uh, and where Bobby's is over right. in the back. Those trees are planted maybe I think like, like 10 years, 10, 10 to 15, 10 to 15 years, years ago, yeah. right? And they just begin to provide shade now. Right. So we need some trees. I don't know if you could have to plant bigger trees, right. already, already full grown uh, trees, but we need some more trees in order to provide the shade because the sun will be hot, trust yeah. me. Yeah, and I, um, I, I, my minister is one of those advocates for that whole tree planting exercise. I mean, mm -hmm. he, he, he has envisioned where trees the trees, yeah, trees supposed to go. Mm -hmm. I also actually received um, two weeks ago um, a, from a landscape company here an opportunity to, to shade the dual carriageway on its outskirts, not in its middle, on the outskirts. Mm -hmm. So it's something that we actually... On the sidewalks is it? Yeah, not on the sidewalks, but... When it's, you it's the outskirts? It, on the inside, like on festival grounds and on, on, the, on the sides of the road. Wait, for where people walk in. For where people walk yes. in. So that okay. the, the trees will come up, but they also... Instead of have, having the trees in the middle right. of the highway, you have the trees on, on the, the side. Outside. But yeah. they also, in their proposal, they also talked about how the trees that they're proposing will become buffers for the sound when we have festival in a festival village. Oh, so that's it's a dual it's a dual thing. So that's something that we're looking at. Um, we, we looked at, you know, after you pass treasure because the grape trees so far right now, with the, even when they trim back they create a little shade. And along that whole situation, along that whole drive, there are some shade. But we need to decide how far back we're gonna cut back to make sure that it's comfortable walking for people and that kind of thing. So yes, trees are something that um, we are really looking into. And I know my minister is, is one advocate that, you know, we need some shade trees because when you walk and it's all hot and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, he has a vision for this whole shade tree promenade to come from the House of Assembly straight down. I mean, and, and if you if you listen to him, you, you actually get the visual, you I, know, I, which I, is I, important. I, I can see it. Yeah, you get I, the visual, which is important. Really. And, and, and it creates a different facade for the area. A whole so, different feeling. Yeah, so um, feeling. yes, trees are trees yeah. are vitally important yeah. as, as we as we move so on. We need to get to that. Mm -hmm. Now you know, uh, vent, street vending is 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 is, a, is, a, is a opportunity for us as a people. You know, we, we have a culture. We come from a culture and a history of entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, and I often say it. I say it all the time, uh, wherever I am, that in, in where I grew up in East End, all the men I knew were businessmen. Mm -hmm. You know, the fisherman was a businessman. The the boat builder was a businessman. The contractor was a businessman. The farmer was a businessman. 
and you know, and, and all of the people I know, and, and many other women, they had they ran the stores, they right. you know the, the bakery, the, the the you know you go get go and get your groceries, and so I grew up around people who were entrepreneurs, and all and most, most I think many of us in the BVI we know about we have that entrepreneurial spirit in our DNA. Right. So if, if, if we lose our job or if we don't jo have a job, we normally will create a job for ourselves. Right. And a lot of times now it's difficult to create a job given the development and how everything's situated, the laws and all of that. So we were set up along the road and I mean, I mean, Shabazz is a, a real business now. And I remember, <laughs> I remember Shabazz was, was a, a, a shack right. on the side of the road, mm -hmm. you know. And so that, 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 that's an ex and I'm using that as an example of the potential growth for, entre oh, for the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I know we have some challenges with vendors. Uh, we, had some, we had a challenge yeah. on the cruise ship there. We had a challenge on some trees. What are we going to do about a marketplace? What are we going to do uh, about a space to, to get our vendors in a location where they can, they can make a living, they can provide the services, and the city could still uh, look like a, a modern city? I know that's I know that's what you, your it's, big it's, challenge. It's, it's a challenge, yes. um, but it's a challenge that I'm I'm willing to take on. Um, the first thing is, you know, we have a lot of vendors who have vending licenses, and one of the things about the vending license it actually tells you where you need to operate, mm -hmm. and a lot of people are not taking that part into consideration where to operate. And then we have another situation where people feel well. This little piece of land is clear, so I could just go on this little piece of land. And sometimes that piece of land belongs to somebody, it belongs to Crown, and you haven't asked permission to, to go on it. And then I have the people who are paying leases, I have the people who are paying rent, I have the people who are paying mortgages, overhead. Who, who have overheads, mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, I got that call already, and, and they're, they're concerned that you're coming out, you don't have any of these things. You make your money and you go away. You're not even making a contribution to society. And but I'm at the same, and I'm my business. And, uh, yeah, take and, away and, my business. Right. And yeah. so there's a balancing act. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and and one of the, one of the things that we had to do is we we have to sit down and decide vending in the city of Rotom. What a, what is it that we want? how we're going to facilitate it to make sure that everybody is comfortable. And as you talked about the marketplace, I actually had some of the vendors relocate to the marketplace. And, you know, not just relocate them to the marketplace, but, but, but keeping the conversation going. And, you know, one of the concerns that they had is they didn't feel that, A, they could be seen, B, it was so much vehicles around them that they lost their produce. And you, you had to understand from whence they were coming. Mm -hmm. And so therefore you have a situation with some of them you know, outside in that same area. But um, as, as we sit and we try to move forward from the Ministry of Communication and Works and the Office of the City Manager, the whole situation of bending is something that we actually are sitting down, deciding how we're going to address it. Mm -hmm. It cannot, it cannot continue, continue like this. Yeah. Because then it, it, bring, it brings the, the city to a slummish kind of, of, of area, mm -hmm. which we don't want. Yeah, people tell me, well, I was here yesterday and I cleaned up the area. That's beside the point. The point is we need to decide what the vending situation is going to be and how we... How the we, parents is going to... How the parents are going to be and how we're going to facilitate it at a professional yeah. level. Yeah. And that's the part that people don't yeah. get, you know. I, you know, I could vend any kind of... That's not going to work. Um, one of the things that I got was the fact that um, I did the market scene twice last year. I mm -hmm. didn't do it this year for a number of reasons. And it's not that I won't do it again. But that market scene created an avenue for people to vend, which is something that, you know, we, we are thinking about as we look to where, where we're going to locate it, because once we have redesigned our so Charges Plaza, we may not be able to do that market scene there mm -hmm. as comfortable yeah, as we've yeah, done it yeah. in the past. So we need to figure out what it is we're, we're, mm -hmm. we're going to do as it relates to vending within the city. And it, for me, that is one of my biggest challenges, but yeah. it's a challenge that I'm willing to face head on yeah. and get it rectified because well, people have to eat. Yeah. As, you, well, as you were just speaking, it, it flashed in my mind that you know where the market is No, the mm -hmm. old market, that, that, that we could take that down from there and, 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 and build a market. You know, you know how the sidewalk comes right. around? Come around. Because, because, and, and I'll be, I'll be and honest just with make you. It, that make it on the thing. front so that you could see it. Yeah, and, and then the parking pack could be on the, the back. back. Yeah. Because what I'm saying is once the vendor is up front with the public, yeah. 
then it's okay. The only concern I would have if we did it is we need to make a lay-by in the front so that it doesn't obstruct traffic. Because okay. yeah. right now you have the lay-by in front of Lime, so that helps the situation. We'd have to get another lay-by so just in, in front. The, move, 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 move the sidewalk back, move a, little the sidewalk back, back a little bit, bit yeah. to create it. Well, and I, I'm sure, right, if, if, if it's set up in that right order, that we, we would have people actually it, 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 willing it, and able to move in there. It could work. Yeah, yeah it could work. Know. So it's something to think about, and yeah. thanks. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah it, it, I, I mean, you know, everybody's got to eat, everybody got to make a living, and we have to enjoy the, 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 the city. And we, we have to be able to manifest our culture. You yes, know, those, those are, that's, what, that's, that's, what, that's what we're accustomed to doing. Yeah, we found out at 10 o'clock. Yes. I mean, it's always a great, great uh, <laughs> I always have a lot of fun yep. talking to you. You're so uh, exuberant, excited, and, and, and really enthusiastic about what you're doing. Yes, and, I, I, and it's I great love to it. See, it's great to see that enthusiasm. Yes, I love it. I yeah. really, really love it. Yes. Yeah. Great, great. Anything now uh, we miss out quick, quick, in the next um, couple of seconds? No, you know, just... You know, we, talk, we talk about the quick, we talk about the, the, the city mm -hmm. and... We still have, you know, we, we still have from Gene Hill uh, up through Humpton's Gut and around McNamara and so on. And what we, you know, and we've been, and like the, 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 the conversation usually centers around the main part of the, the city. The main part of the city. But not that we don't go to the outskirts of the city. Yes, the perimeter. The How, perimeter. We, what, yeah. We, 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 any, um, any thoughts being given to the perimeter? We actually do, do have some thoughts for the perimeter. We actually are planning to sit down and meet with Honorable Keynes, Honorable Dolores Christopher. Um, as, as to how we can actually assist them in, in, in facilitating their place. We have a lot of people from that area who come and say, you know, you got a little gut to clean, let me know. So I think she's putting her little package together so that we could actually execute. Because one of the things that we would need now is manpower. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Listen, come back anytime, you know, just, just, just pop in. <laughs> just, right. just give me a it call. Shouldn't, it shouldn't be too long. Yeah, just give I, me a call. I mean, say, you I'd know, like to listen. keep you updated yeah. on, you know, what's happening, especially with the prison and the, the old post office building um, as they progress. So, yes, I'll be back. Cool. It's always yeah. good, though. It's yeah, always good. Always good to see you. Next week, the spotlight going to shine on the former Miss BBI, Sherry DeCastro, and her new after school program oh, she has one. that's named right to read and the first of its kind in the BVI focusing solely on literacy for children and adults so make sure you hear it's going to be uh, interesting uh, it's something that we need we need to uh, continue to build our reading and comprehension skills not only in our young people and our children but in adults as well and I know some adults didn't have a lot of the opportunities that we have matter of fact they provided the opportunities for us and so they sacrifice themselves for us. And so some, some, and some of them who have lived for a long time, who still want to be able to, uh, to experience a, a certain level of literacy, certainly could take advantage of that opportunity. So we'll be talking to Sherry De Castro. She's going to be doing great things uh, coming up in the future. Of course, Spotlight is seen every Tuesday at 8 p.m. live. And we broadcast on Sunday afternoons at 2.30. Make sure you tune in. Also, you could check us out on jtvlive.net. Uh, thank you very much for your words of encouragement, your criticisms, uh, your ideas. Continue to email me at spotlight, jtvspotlight at yahoo.com. I'm your anchor reminding you that when the spotlight is on, you see the facts. Peace and blessings. Spotlight is brought to you by the National Bank of the Virgin Islands and CCT Global Communications.